I don't know what the hell Mordon is on, but um, it's not normal. You know, and I don't know what's going on at this coronation ceremony. This is the one where they were singing Why That Vagina Camilla, which was quite funny, really, to say that um, they unlawfully took away the signs from Graham Smith and Republic, which, that's breaking the law. I don't know what Mordon is talking about when she's going on about stand up and fight, stand up and fight. The problem is they are fighting their own country. We're meant to have military to protect the country. Your own government is not supposed to be your enemy unless it's a conquering enemy that has conquered you and intends to retain that position. We're meant, we're meant to elect MPs to represent us in Parliament. We're meant to have laws that we abide by. You're not supposed to fight the law. You're supposed to use it. These MPs seem to be fighting by breaking the law, yet they seem to have the advantage because we seem to be the ones who they are using the police force, directing the police force to apprehend and prosecute us when we engage in this so-called stand-up and fight, and the MPs seem to be getting away with breaking the law. Yet the actual bill we've got explicitly and specifically creates not protection for ministers, not protection for judges, and not protection for councillors. When they infringe on our rights, they are breaking the law. We don't infringe on their rights because unless I hire a private prosecutor or I enter a affidavit against these ministers... How can I be subverting the liberties of the realm by prosecuting them for their political casework? It's actually one and the same casework. The, the protection that Hanningfield had confirmed at Southwark Crown Court, it, it's, I've, I've got Jeremy Johnson QC's um, legal representation. It's actually not based on Magna Carta. Lords and Barons can be prosecuted by their equals. And there are even people now, like there's a guy on Verbs' channel the other day saying that he claims Magna Carta is fake, whether it is or not. Jeremy Johnson QC bases the legal basis on the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is for us. It's our protection in casework. And the only reason that MPs are protected is because we elect them to represent us in Parliament. And the only reason the Lords have immunity is because they are full time acting in Parliament uh, for lifetime peerage. And this whole legislation where they suddenly decided they were going to make it so MPs can be prosecuted. Well, why have a privileges committee then? Why does the Commons need a Privileges Committee if they can just be prosecuted normally without any intervention or decisions from Parliament? If they can just be prosecuted like anyone else? It seems to evade the point. And even Mogg is, I mean, I don't even believe a word Mogg says, but even he said that the Privileges Committee was defective from the start. It, the, immu the immunity, the immunity, whichever brackets or hyphens or canyphens you want to put it in, it is the same thing that you've got if you are gathering evidence and submitting a case to an MP and then passing the baton into Parliament and then passing it through Parliament and then passing the baton to Lord Haddingfield and he can stick it where he wants uh, and he can stick it uh, on the King's throne and he can sit on it if he wants when he's signing it off. It, it's the same thing. There isn't any different thing. And all the legislation that is written, like, you know, inquiries act, oh, let's, you know, enact some modern law, let's give the witnesses immunity, why would you do that? Because they're bringing evidence in a case on the side of the side that is bringing the case, right? That's why it's created. There is no different immunity. So Hanningfield's immunity, which is lifetime permanent, because he's a lifetime peer, although he was prosecuted beforehand, they only seem to decide that he's got it after they punished him, which there's the irony in it. it. It isn't a different thing. The illegal prosecutions by the King's Bench is the same one which is set out in the Tumultuous Act, which anyone bringing petitions, if there are any misdemeanours or crimes, they were brought King's Bench, which was later made illegal. So you, you can't prosecute it. It's the same thing. There is no 
other thing. There is no different thing. It is the same thing. All you have to do is prove that you are eligible to be covered. And to be eligible, you have to be engaged. You know, um, I don't know what Martin is talking about with, uh, you know, stand up and fight rubbish. You know, um, with this, and these are the worst swords that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I've seen a better, I mean, what are these swords used in these ceremonies? I mean, a plastic sword from Toy Master is probably better than these things. You know, what even has Mordaunt got to do with the king and the coronation anyway, even if she's leader of a political party? I mean, they're all singing why that vagina Camilla anyway in there, are they choir? Well, according to Russell Brand. You know, why are we in a country where we don't elect people to fight us? And this whole Labour vs Tory thing, you know, who is... Right, who's represent... Can I... Who is representing our political rights? Because if your doctor was fighting you, if your doctor was fighting against you, right, then how would you get... Um, you know, how, how can you get a diagnosis... How can you get an assessment? How can you get treatment? How can you get anything from a doctor if he's fighting you? So therefore, the MPs who are meant to be elected by an area, if MPs aren't there to represent their area, the people of a specific area, if they're only there to represent a party, then they aren't representing an area, are they anymore? Because if they're elected, if you're only elected an MP to represent either Labour, you're not, you're actually not representing an MP to represent Labour or Tory. And however it ended up that way is the main perversion of it all. People in an area elect someone to represent them, right? They don't vote, so they elect someone to represent the majority of people in the area who voted for one person. That means that when you elect an MP, right, he, he or she is not therefore there only to represent the majority of people in the area who elected them for whichever party that is, because then they wouldn't be the MP of the other people who didn't win the election. They're meant to be representing the area, not the party. Because if you elected MPs on basis of, you know, that that you aren't electing someone to represent a party and then that party has representation but no one else has representation because that means that you are not... And you've got an MP who isn't representing all of his constituents, he's only representing the, a majority of his constituents, and that is actually not how it's meant to be set out. But what we've ended up with is Morden and Sunak and, you know, the cronies, Mog, Gov, who actually are now even saying they will fight against their opposition. So that means they're fighting their own electorate, which is illegal because it makes it illegal in the 1688 bill. It's actually not that much of a big deal about the immunity because it's got it in the Scottish Act as well. And it, it, we had certain immunities that which were being undermined before. In fact, we had them even in the Cromwell time because we were talking about it. It's actually about the ministers. It's about judges, ministers and councillors undermining the liberties of the realm. And when they do, it's rendered unlawful. So that is something that they can be charged and prosecuted with. It says it's illegal, makes it unlawful, and it says what it is, it's subverting the liberties and freedoms of the realm. So the only, act, the main, the main and primary thing that the, the immunity doesn't cover, which is much more important than anything else and the police can stick it where the sun don't shine because they weren't fucking around when this law were made and it's still in force right is legal actions against protected persons and really the only persons who are in a position to do that are judges councillors and ministers and police chief officers well prosecutors as well right we if if how could we do that well if i prosecuted them 
if if I submitted an affidavit and tried to prosecute him, but it's the judge who's got to do it. But members of the public rarely lay cases, even civil cases. If I, all right, what if I submit? If I submit tomorrow, I could do it online through the small claims court, civil case against Andrew Bridgen or even Mordon, right? For something that she's doing in relation to a work in Parliament or other people's casework, then I would be breaking the law. I would be subverting the liberties of the realm. I can start, start and submit a case. What these people are doing, Max Hill, Chief Crown Prosecutor, Director of Prosecution, sorry, um, Met Police Chief, these judges, Mordaunt, you know, they are... It is a crime in that act to do that. It's actually more serious. It makes it... It's more serious that they're taking illegal actions against people who are protected when they're under the umbrella of casework in connection with Parliament, which we are equal in protection to the Lords, but only for that casework, not permanently for everything in life. The Lords have got permanent protection for peer lifetime. MPs have foreign elected periods, particularly when it's for those purposes, and it protects their speech, particularly, you know, when they're talking about political matters. And us, because we, we won't have any work to do if we don't hand it to them. It's like past the baton. It effectively is past the baton when it's for the matter of what the baton, um, what the baton, what is written on the baton, what evidence is submitted to the baton, what uh, material is in connection with the baton. That is it, past the baton, and there is, you know, temporary people, there is elected people for durations for mul multiple casework, and then there is lifetime peerage. That is the baton, it's the same freaking baton, right? And as for misdemeanours, the misdemeanours, never, ever, never in the history of England as a public disorder or a um, rebellious behaviour in public being regarded as subverting the freedoms and liberties of the realm. No misdemeanours in public are as serious as subverting the liberties and freedoms of the realm. And it explicitly is judges, it explicitly is councillors and ministers who are in the position to do it. And prosecutors, because obviously they will, the judge will have a case if it's not brought to him by a prosecutor. We could subvert the liberties and of the realm if we got if we got involved in casework more and started bringing illegal cases. N how many people? I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to see a list of how many members of the public went onto the small claims court online and submitted a case against a serving MP or member of the House of Lords. None. Zero. Few. I would count probably you know, less than five in the last 12 or 24 months, I would have thought. We, we could bring... If we knew I would submit prosecutions, I've submitted an affidavit. They just ignored it and blanked it. It was written out well enough. There are some sketchy crime prosecutors that I've seen that are worse than car salesmen's. You know, the shabby bluffing of legal cases in magistrates' courts by car salesman-esque crime prosecutors in cheap suits with the worst questioning lines that could ever be conjured up, um, you know, is just, you know, ridiculous. Misdemeanor... The misdemeanours were brought to King's Bench in connection with all petition casework, including, you know, um, group, gatherings of group, um, you know, saying things, you know, religious things that were illegal. That free speech protects all free speech because the things were, you couldn't talk about certain religious things, right? You got prosecuted for it. And once you make it so you can speak about something which otherwise would be illegal, right? It covers everything. And that's why Lawrence Fox now has been prosecuted. Apparently he's out on bail by the police when he is leader of a political party. He doesn't need to be elected MP. You know, I don't know how the Met Police, you know. Fox can talk hypothetically. 
and he can talk about something that is currently illegal because he, it might he, he could he, he's got the he, he's he's in a position with a political party to uh, make it legal or or have a campaign to make it legal. So you need to talk about it. And even if he said, you know, would you do something? Well, you know, he, he could say whether he would do it or not, but whether he does it or not, he gets the privilege of being immune. The laws that Sunak is trying to bring in, the way that the Met Police are interpreting it is incompatible with rights. You can't enact laws. All of the modern laws that you enact have got to be compatible with those rights. And the, the Met Police crossed the line with um, Graham Hill at that coronation. They took the signs down and then they later apologised. I don't know how it happened because he was meant to have fully informed the police, but one can only say that it likely was Charles who pulled some strings within the higher-ranking officers because he didn't want his coronation spoiled. Yet still, the choir ended up singing some vagina song. You know, what troubles me the most is... We're paying national insurance and we're paying tax on foods, right? Why are our MPs' surgery not representing our political rights? Why isn't my MP ringing up YouTube or emailing them and giving a direction to restore my petition, advertisements, videos and channel? When it's covered, why is it every day I look through legislation when I'm looking for something else, right? Like, you know, why Mog shouldn't be on GB News. And what I happen to come across is, oh, look at this. Um, here we go. Here's one. In the um, local government, England, the local authorities, conduct of referendums, England regulations, 2012. Look at this. Oh, it's to do with um, referendums. Well, it can't be excluding petitions because half of the acts in law, those petitions and referendums go together, right? But anyway, whether or not you agree with that or not, it's true that half of the acts that have the word referendum in the title also say petition in the title and elections because they usually cover the same material, right? So how about this one then? Local authorities conduct of referendums, England regulations. Why would these be so much different from national ones or for petitions? They wouldn't. Part five, item number four. Publish definition of word and terminology of word. Meaning of word. Why would this word mean any different in another act of law in the same context, near identical same title of an act and exact same general context of use, elections, petitions and referendums? The meaning of publish. Why would the meaning of the word publish mean any different in any other act that had the title in it, Local Authorities Conduct of Referendums, England Regulations 2012, 11, 10, 9, 8, stick it where you want, right? Publish means to make available to the public at large, is that Haddonfield, or any section of the public in whatever form and by whatever means, in whatever form and by whatever means, make available to the public at large or any any section of the public, like, you know, like a minority group, right? We know what that means because that is exactly what you do when you're asking people to sign a petition, when you publish it to make it available to the public at large or any section of the public in whatever form and by whatever means. The meaning of publish. So why... How does that exclude or disclude Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TuneCore, or whatever? It doesn't. Do you know why? Because on the petition's website, there is a direction from Parliament published saying, share this petition on Facebook by email or Twitter. Now, if that doesn't include make it available to the public at large or any section of the public in whatever form and by whatever means, and if it doesn't include class F through the definition of an advertisement which includes a legal representation 
on a digital, on a device, illuminated or not, under the interpretation of 336, interpretation of the Town and Country Planning Act 1990, and if that is not compatible with the statutory instruments of that act, later introduced in 2007, Class F, if that is not an advertisement which is required to be displayed by standing orders or any direction of Parliament, oh, look, there's one on the Petitions Career website, which includes platforms online and through the use of enactment, which serves a function of government, like, oh, the money's closed for five weeks. We must give notice to the public in a major press newspaper, at least one major newspaper. Oh, well, is that a private one? Is it owned by a private company? What if they don't want it in the newspaper? Well, tough. This is it. Why is nobody emailing? Why is it when, you know, why is it when an MP gets their YouTube channel taken down? It gets put straight back up again. Someone in either the night lawyers in the um, Daily Mail or the, you know, London Evening Standard or The Sun, who are pally pals with Boris Johnson's favourite writing column, you know, why is it someone somewhere sends an email because no one's got the phone number for YouTube and magically YouTube go, yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir, and then puff, MP David's, um, Davidson's YouTube is magically restored back again. Why is it when our channels are declared and being used for such advertisements to make large to the public, to make available to the public at large or any section of the public in whatever form and by whatever means possible. Why is it no MP in England who is elected in to serve the people in his area, not the majority of people who elected him on his party, who he likes, all of the people in his area, why is that MP not sending an email to YouTube what says on the end of the email address parliament.gov.uk with the authority? I, my electorate is engaged in a casework, and I am telling you, Neil Mohan, Paul Groves, to put the channel back up and the videos now, as it is legally required in law. Further to that, if the MP doesn't do it, why isn't the Petitions Committee in Parliament doing it when that's their job? Why isn't the Advertising Standards Agency doing it, who govern adverts, governance, things you can do, and governance and things you can't do? Hey, something I can do. Why aren't they doing it? There's another taxpayer-funded department also responsible. Here we have multiple departments responsible. There is a crossover here. Oh, you know... Shall I go to the hospital? I've cut my knee. Or shall I go to the doctor's surgery in the morning? Depends if I can wait or not. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Where shall I go? To the hospital or to the doctor's? Well, it's the same. Ooh, which shall I choose? Are they both responsible? Well, shall I go to my MP? AMP? Any MP? A political party whose main daily endeavours are politics who have multiple MPs in their party, multiple members of parliament, multiple members of the Lords, or the Advertising Standards Agency, who are responsible for adverts as well. There are political ones that need governance. Why are we why is the only person on the planet who has brought a case against YouTube seems to be an American guy, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who is running for president. Where have we actually got any MPs who are doing a job for anyone in their area who has elected them to represent them? 
who isn't actually fighting them. You don't elect an MP to fight you. You don't vote for someone. I vote for them to attack me. Deny my rights. You don't vote an MP in to subvert your own fundamental freedoms and liberties. Because, you know, if every, you know, we'll, you know, what happens if Vobes goes on his channel tomorrow and Neil Oliver and says, right, everyone, go on to the um, small claims court and everyone submit cases against Penny Mordon, right? What's going to happen then when she gets uh, a thousand legal cases against uh, small claims from her constituents because she's not representing their legal rights and it costs them money because they had to pay a small fee to, you know, lawyers or to mediators to try and resolve the problem with YouTube when they shouldn't have had to pay for them because we pay our national insurance for surgery to have our rights upheld. I'd like to see... I I'm getting sick of the Met Police like a bull in a china shop, um, smashing us around, smashing into Lawrence Fox's house, smashing into, um, you know, protesters, smashing into Extinction Rebellion, smashing into Just Stop Oil people, smashing into my house here. Um, it's taking paper stickers when they're clearly covered through the Town and Country Planning Act under advertisements, under class E and F advertisements, when it's never seen criminal damage or Highways Act placing signs at the side of the road that aren't authorised because there's full authorization from the lower, not from any person, from the lower, from an act of lower. Where is our representation? You know? And, you know... You'd have thought even the Green Party or the Liberal Democrats who aren't meant to be on this um, uni-party um, government, you know? If I send this to the Green Party now and email it, what are the Green Party going to do? Because, you know, they've got multiple members of Parliament. They've got who act with the authority of Parliament. They've got multiple members of the House of Lords. Why aren't they representing us? doesn't matter whether it's my MP or my... Actually, I've got parish... Even parish councillor. It's a councillor for a certain area. You know, a parish councillor really even has the authority or your local councillor, you know, if it's in your local area... You know, these people have an email address, which is .gov.uk, and that has an authority. You know, the, really, the, the lawyers, which we pay for with our tax money, the lawyers who serve the council, right, who apparently, you know, we're not allowed to talk to them, they're only there for councillors. Yes, they're there for councillors when the constituents have a problem and they see the councillor, and then the councillor has access and the privilege to the use of taxpayer-funded lawyers who don't seem to be on our side at all, uh, and they're supposed to say, oh, yes, well, you know, you should send an email to YouTube, I'll write it out for you, um, because that's what we're paid for, to serve the councillors. Yes, why can't my local councillors or parish councillors use the lawyers which are afforded to buy our taxpayer money? That's why we pay them. That's why it's our taxpayer money. That's why we pay for those lawyers' wages. Why aren't those lawyers contacting uh, Neil Mohan and Paul Groves at YouTube and telling them to put the videos back up? Further than that, why aren't they taking legal action against, legal action against them if they don't? You know, this is it. Why is no one helping us at all whatsoever when, you know, the, it, it, there is no question about the law? YouTube, uh, it doesn't matter if it's private or not. It has no consequence of whether it's privately owned. Newspapers have always been private owned. They have to accommodate for the d democratic function it's part of the deal. It's part of why they're even allowed to exist through having a certificate of limp corporation of limited company. Here is a good, you know, here is a certificate from the government. We are allowing you to have a company as long as you abide by the terms and conditions of the realm, which are this. 
and you know that's what you, your policy will include, whether you like it or not. Or you don't have, you can't even have a company. This is the thing we need. So, and what the worst thing is, thirty-eight degrees, who also fall under this. Thirty-eight degrees. Publish means make available to the public at large or any section of the public in whatever form and by whatever. Uh, means, well, that's 38 degrees. Yeah, I've had three positions taken down when they don't have the right to intervene in my legal cases. I won't mind, but 38 degrees are complaining about the councils removing paint, like Angela Ditchfield's. 38 degrees have been having a go at it now. 38 degrees have been going around London painting um, QR codes for campaigns on the pavement and the council have been taking them off. When I am sticking up for 38 degrees now, when it clearly says in the Town and Country Planning Act that they can't remove them because you've got f automatic express and deemed consent. And they've also got to actually, even if you didn't have permission or consent in the law, they'd have to send a notice and tell you to remove it, but they're going around with the street cleaners. And they were saying that they'd targeted them with the street cleaners. So the council's breaking the law there. But then again, if the government aren't upholding and respecting the law, if they're just ignoring it and even to 38 degrees, then how is 38 degrees going to respect the law to us ourselves on its own website? It's kind of like this... We're in this kind of like um, self-harm where no one's having their rights upheld by higher authorities. So then that people, because they're not having their rights upheld themselves, they're not upholding other people's rights either. And that is what's happening on a lot of Facebook groups, you know, when people are getting political groups and political actions when, you know, people aren't getting their rights upheld, not only by the platform, but by other people, because they've created this new power hungry authoritarian culture which is divide and conquer and if Mordaunt thinks that's fighting giving everyone swords they've given everyone buttons giving everyone power buttons but these power buttons are almost like rank and file buttons you know they've only got a certain you know there's a hierarchy of power buttons you know, if everyone has these power buttons and divides and conquers, you know, for us, the big platforms, but you've got to be under under your little next, you know, um, you know, under the overriding buttons of Neil Mohan and um, Paul Groves. It's going to pot. It is going to pot. But this, this is not wrong, this legislation. It is not wrong. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting annoyed because if, if the Green Party or the Lib Dems don't do something, you would have thought they actually would be, um, you know, at least more interested in doing something than the Tories or Labour, who are totally and completely corrupt. You know, Starmer, he's meant to be a human rights lawyer. He's never seen human rights. He couldn't give a, tiddly tip, a tiddlywinks about human rights. You know, standing up and fight. Yeah, the, we're electing people and they're fighting against us. And we need to stop people. We need to stop electing people who then fight against the people who have elected them, right? Or even the people who haven't elected them. I think that's the problem. They're getting elected by a minority of an area. Well, it is a minority because if you count the people who didn't vote, it is a minority. These MPs are getting elected by a minority of an area because the majority doesn't vote at all, 50-odd percent now. And then once those MPs are elected, they are only representing the minority of the area that elected them and they consider everyone else their enemies. And then Penny Mordaunt is now their champion and saying, fight, fight us. No, there's law to comply with. You're wanting us to comply with the law. You're sending the police round to get people to obey the law. Yet, the law is that you can deny and subvert our rights and the police can't. And you've got to actually represent, secure, and enforce our rights. That's why you're elected. So why are they not enforcing our rights on YouTube? Where is it? 